video series where I and Benji play board video games. Video board games. Today is Early Access Gloomhaven and it's a tutorial. I've already done this once with the webcam in the wrong corner so you couldn't see anything. So here we go again. Probably less amusing but more insightful. Let's do the tutorial. I can now no longer say I've never played this game because I played the tutorial. It was supposed to be an easy job. Track the bandits to their lair, sneak inside, grab any loot and get out sharpish. It's unclear exactly when it all went wrong. Perhaps it was the crack heart smashing the entrance open loudly with his fists or the brute remaining ramming a bandit guard's face into a wall to stifle his attempts at alerting the others. No more reading. You can read for yourselves. Split up from the grey cart. Let's find him. Well, 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 what do we have here then? Smash face. Looks like the brute is going to have to fight his way out of here. First thing you do each round is to pick two ability cards. I know this now. We've got to get across that room and deal with that brute guard. These are our ability cards. What a wonderful little mechanic. And provoking Roar, with its lower initiative, will allow me to go before the bandit guard. Jolly good then. So yep, you don't know what they're going to do until you've picked. But our initiative of the first card we picked is lower than their one card. Each half a card represents an action comprised of one or more abilities. You get to use them both, but if you use the top on one, you have to use the bottom on the other. In other words, state the obvious and state the obvious, sir. Let's choose the bottom half of grab and go and get over there. Get over there. Double click there. Now you see how grab and go has become all grand smoky. Look at it. This is to show you the grab and go has been discarded. Brew's up close and personal with the bandit, so it's time to give him a taste of your steel. I will. I will, I will. Plus one to two as a modifier. It gives me three damage. Enough to murder. Carry out murder. On that bandito. This shows the modifiers in the bag, how lovely it would be in other games if that was so. Naming no names, of course. To pick it up, you need to perform a loot action. These can appear on ability cards with a number indicating the radius around you that can loot. Loot one. One. But if you end your turn in a hex with loot, you'd loot for free. Panning the camera is also a thing. Did it, did it, did it. Now then. Oh, look at this. Look at it. Figured it. Oh, crap. Right, let's get into another room. When you've got at least two discarded cards, you can perform a long short rest to recover some of them. Long or short rest? Short rest, however, will burn one of those cards at random. Just so that you can use them immediately in this very turn. Long rest, you take a turn off. Or your initiative 99 anyway. And you heal too. And you get to choose which card you burn. Simple as that. Long rest to me. I'll burn Leaping Cleave, alright. I will burn it. Good. Heal up. End my turn. Round three. One of the most important tactical moments when exploring dungeons is when to, knowing when to open doors. They're immediately added to the initiative track. So, in other words, if you're going to open a door, you should probably select the lower initiative. You can hold down the Alt key to see them at all times. Let's choose Spare Dagger and Grab and Go. Sold. I will defer to your innately better judgement. Butter off a grab and go. Let's open a door. Oh dear. 1v2. What a surprise, my bad guys. What are they doing? 
This one is trying to move an attack three at initiative 70. An attack three at range. 68. Okay, let's finish off. Yep, I've done that. 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 All right, I'll get you. God, in terms of moving attack, we'll only be able to move a single hex. We can now make informed decisions about how to go. Your best bet is to get the brute out of range of the guard's move or get them as close to the archer as possible. If you are adjacent to someone with a ranged attack, you get disadvantage, which means you roll or take two modifiers and keep the worst one. We can still then hit this guy with a spare dagger. Let's finish our move and then attack. As you can see, the archer now has a flashing disadvantage icon to indicate the. Yeah, okay. Makes the most sense. Times two modifier. Frozen in time, animation. Three times two is six. Maths. Maths. See, disadvantage worked to my advantage. Three minus two becomes, you guessed it, one. Yes, yeah, so you can take the damage, burn one available card, or burn two discarded cards. But we shall take the damage on this occasion. Select provoking raw and sweep sweeping blow. And we get to go first again, which is jolly good. Jolly good indeed. So let's disarm you. Let us disarm you. Two plus one, and you're disarmed. We then move and push you to your grisly, grisly skip movement demise. Ready for this? Nice. Through careful positioning and planning, you can often find creative lines that like the one to beat the odds, even when seemingly outnumbered. Time to check the next room with the Brutus. No available cards remaining. Let's long rest again to gain some cards back. So we're going to burn Provoking Raw now. That's the bottom of half. is no use to us right now. Fine. Fine. Let me heal two with a long rest. Now. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's go to the next room. One to open the door. Well, look at the treasury near and three bandit guards. This ain't gonna be easy. Hang on. Who's that in the corner? Finally reunited with our crack heart. Looking in rough shape. Looking in rough, rough shape. They're all moving to and attacking to, apparently. What can we do about it? Let's get the brute over towards crack heart. Check. I sir. I know what you're thinking, spare dagger is a ranged attack. I wasn't thinking that. But the brute is standing next to the target and a disadvantage attack is surely not the most intelligent move. But you've got default actions for situations like this. Instead of doing this, you can attack too. Where the symbol should be clearer that this is ranged. Or move too. We're going to attack too. In melee. Just to differentiate. I know if it's got range it means it's attack. It's ranged, sorry. But, yes. I don't agree. I don't agree with that. Craghart's at 29. 
move up to that next power band and hit them both with av Avalanche. Avalanche. And our boots of striding give us. Swish. 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 It's like it was meant to be. We know what we're doing. We know what we're doing. <laughs> all right, top to bottom. Then all adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. The bottom half of Craig Hall's rambling advance is a move ability followed by a damage ability followed by an earth elemental infusion. And then you spend the infusion. Yep. I get it. I get it. So this is creating available for use after the current character turn ends. So we can't use it this turn. Avalanche's area effect. We are the little scray hex. The enemy is the red hexes. Four damage apiece. And as you can see. You can select any space. That hit pretty hard. That pretty pretty hard. Did you notice the burn icon in the bottom right corner of Avalanche's top half? Oh, actions with this icon are so one use. A one use. But the default action will discard it. Let's take some damage. Let's take some damage. It's lethal. It's lethal. Not if we burn a card, it ain't. Not if we burn a card. Free damage, that's grim. We'll take it. We're not dead. Once again, the brute doesn't have enough available cards to even take a turn this round. He's going to have to rest, but a long rest would let the bandit guard go first. So a short rest means we randomly lose a card. Spare dagger isn't exactly ideal as the randomly selected card, but we can redraw. We don't need grab and go. Spare dagger first. Spare dagger first. Explosive punch her lower lowest ED and then crater because we can use our infusions. In the bandito. Move one attack to another area of effect which is moderately wasted but still does the trick. Still does the trick. And let's move the default to pick up some loot at the end of our turn. Minor healing potion. During your turn perform a heal three self action. And a warhammer. Perhaps the crack heart will swap his ill fitting boots with a warhammer, they look like they'd fit the brute better anyhow. Spicy Punch was selected mostly for the low initiative. It offers very little else in this situation. Explosive Punch to move away slightly. And then shoot in the face. I would have moved further, personally. Skip the rest of the movement. We infused Earth last turn. But we want to augment it with a push. Doing our old trick from before. Did I just... I don't think I did. Miss, damn it! 20 times zero is still zero! God damn you! Pushed you though. Pushed you. Pushed you. Victory! That was the tutorial. Second time I played it. Still equally good. I really want to buy the massive big box of Gloomhaven now. The mechanics are sweet! Sweet! Multiple use of cards. Use the top, you've got to use the bottom of something else. Everything clicks so far for me. 
That's it, however, for this video. Join me next time, where I start a new adventure. However, that's it from me. I'll see you next time.